Vilta Larsen is a, another medication that uh, may be applicable to our patients impacted by 53 skippable genetic mutations in the dystrophin gene. It is uh, a medication that is uh, allowing for a uh, reading frame to be corrected for those 53 amenable patients. And this leads ultimately to improvements in uh, dystrophin production and uh, hopefully improvement in muscle function as we see increases in that dystrophin uh, production. The mechanism of action is such that it permits uh, skipping of that exon 53 and, uh, and allows for a reinstitution of the reading frame to produce dystrophin protein. And when that dystrophin protein is improved in uh, the amount that is produced, that ultimately uh, we hope would lead to improvement in that muscle strength and muscle function. So this is a medication that is currently under review by the FDA under accelerated approval. It's also an excellent skipping drug. So this is, belongs to the same group as etaplirsen and golodirsen. So they're um, exon skipping medications. So they're meant to modify uh, the gene mutation to allow skipping the mutated area of the gene to allow for production of dystrophin protein. This particular medication, it's um, for skipping uh, mutation that are amenable to skipping of exon 53. And um, it's not approved yet, but we are expecting a potential approval, um, I believe in the summer of this year. And uh, this drug will be um, applicable to about 10% of patients that have a mutation that is um, amenable to skipping of exon 53. And again, it will, allow, it will be also a once a week IV infusion. But again, it's important to remember that this is not a drug for all the Duchenne, but only for those Duchenne patients that has certain specific mutation that are amenable to skipping of exon 53. So we're really awaiting for this potential other uh, drug to add to our list of um, medication uh, for Duchenne dystrophy. So Vitalarsen um, is another uh, treatment that um, is for patients who have the DMD gene changes that are amenable to exon 53 skipping. Um, the initial trials uh, looked at a low and a high dose uh, for this particular medication in ambulatory boys um, and um, has just recently been published in uh, JAMA. Um, and what they saw is that there was a um, improvement in the functional scales um, for the boys um, who were, um, as part of the studies, we do what's called a timed motor function. So it could look at how quickly you stand up, up from the floor or how, or how many steps you could take in a, um, in a six minute walk. Um, and what, one of the things that the study did show was an increase in the uh, dystrophin, um, uh, dystrophin levels. Um, and some of those increases um, for both the low and the high dose uh, cohorts were at 6%. Um, it, so essentially Golodirsen and um, the Vitalarsen are both for patients who skip uh, exon 53. Um, they differ in the, st the structure of their molecules. Um, and so um, one is um, smaller than the other. Um, and they, um, but they do seem to result in an increase in the dystrophin protein. There are preliminary reports that have been presented at meeting and basically has been studied in two doses. Um, and uh, um, 40 and 80 milligrams per kilogram just to find uh, best dose. And the preliminary results on the phase two study showed that the drug was um, relatively safe. Uh, we really know uh, major emerging um, significant side effects. They also were able to demonstrate that there was in fact um, skipping um, so that's the mechanism of action. So they were, with RT-PCR, they were uh, able to demonstrate that there was in fact skipping at the messenger RNA level. 
They also were able to demonstrate production of the dystrophin protein uh, when studied by Western blood. And the preliminary results are encouraging because they showed about five to 6% production of dystrophin. And also they were able to um, uh, demonstrate that the protein, the dystrophin was localizing where it's supposed to localize at the level of the muscle membrane. Um, and so these are very encouraging results and we're really looking forward to more data um, to show us that this is a, is a potential um, medication for Duchenne dystrophy. Um, so with the vital arson uh, trials, they have not seen any significant, serious uh, adverse events. Um, it was well tolerated. Um, and, um, and again, typical uh, side effects are gonna include like a headache, um, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain. Um, Respiratory symptoms are, are common um, in uh, boys who are on chronic steroids or in common in children in, in general. So those were um, respiratory symptoms or respiratory illnesses were also noted as uh, additional events. It's an IV infusion. It has to be given once a week. Again, with the same model, you know, uh, based on the safety that we know so far, um, it can be uh, safely administered uh, as an outpatient setting, so even in an infusion center or at home. And in terms of safety so far, um, I have not seen any emerging serious um, uh, side effects. But as in general, with this group of medication, antisense oligonucleotides and morpholinos, we always have to be aware of potential uh, kidney toxicity, and just uh, keep an eye on that. Although so far the results have been quite encouraging. This um, uh, drug is really for patients that have mutation that are uh, amenable to exome 53 skipping. And like I said before, these comprise about 10% of all the patients with Duchenne. Now, the preliminary clinical trials that were done on children with Duchenne muscular dystrophy, um, that were ambulatory, and I believe they were between the ages of four and 10, and usually because clinical trials are always done on um, children of about that age and ambulatory so that you can also start showing clinical effectiveness, which usually is measured based on a six minutes walk test and the North Star. So motor function that has to do with walking, doing stairs, getting up from the floor. Um, and uh, I think that the, there are preliminary data that suggests also some clinical benefit, meaning that all the motor scales were going in the right direction when compared to the natural history, which is obviously worsening of all those motor scales um, over time. And in terms of safety so far from the preliminary results that have been presented so far, there hasn't been any emerging serious uh, side effects uh, that I know of. Um, so based on the, um, the data um, that it was presented, it does seem to be, um, different in the amounts of dystrophin that is produced. So looking at numbers um, uh, from 1% with goladirsin to about 6% with um, the vitilarsin. Actually, um, they both drugs are targeted to the same um, type of patients. So patients that have mutations that are amenable to um, exome 53 skipping. So um, they are similar uh, in that way. And so they will target at the same subgroup of Duchenne patients. So I think at the end of the day, once uh, more um, final results and more data uh, become publicly available, um, I think they will um, both target that group and it will remain to be seen, you know, compare the safety profile and the efficacy profile, and then it's, uh, it will be very nice to have actually two options.